Hey, James and Mitchell here, and in this video, we're going to be continuing our series looking at Howard's Grand Tableau, this time focusing on the card surrounding the significator. So let's jump in. And here we are with the Grand Tableau laid out. This is Howard's Grand Tableau, and the cards that we have been using for this series um, is the Mystical Lenormand deck. It is by Regula Elizabeth Feichter and the artwork is by Urban Trouch. And so in previous segments we've looked at the overall impressions of the Grand Tableau. We looked at the three first three cards that offered general advice or guidance and then we looked at the four corner cards and they offer um, some brief insight into the overall story that the Grand Tableau um, is going to show us uh, more in detail at various places and at various times. So those were the first three videos in the series and I will post a link to each one of those in the description box below. And in this installment, we're going to be looking at the cards that surround Howard. So Howard is a gentleman in this particular case. And his card being placed where it is in this position of the tableau is in the House of the Mice. And so my first impression was that the situation at the time was creating a lot of stress and worry for Howard and he was also looking at it from the perspective of the other meaning of the mice which is something being lessened, something being diminished, something um, on a decline or something being eroded away and so that would be um, two things. It could be you know his challenge with getting people interested and you know he's seeing a decline in that and also too how that decline was maybe creating a sense of diminishment and lessening um, his sense of self in terms of this service that he is trying to offer. And if I didn't say it um, before, Howard and I did this reading because Howard is an Akashic Records consultant and at the time he was working on becoming a level two consultant which would allow him to look at the records of clients in one-to-one -one consultations. Um, he had already been trained and certified as a level one and level one ARCs have the ability to access their own records, but when you're a level two, you are able to access the records for um, clients in consultations. And so that's what he wanted to do because he saw the value of looking at his own records and wanted to offer that to other people. So that was the situation that we were looking at at the time that we did this grant to blow. So we're going to be looking at the cards. When I say surrounding him, we're going to be looking at the cards that are above him the cards below him, the cards behind him, and the card in front of him. So going with the cards that are above him, the immediate thing I noticed was that the clouds was above him. So two things with the clouds. First thing with the clouds is that the clouds can represent when it's this close to the significator, if you use what's called the near and far method, the closer that the clouds are to the significator, the more a uh, problem or the more of, of trouble that the person is experiencing. Um, typically you don't want to see the clouds anywhere near the significator if you're using the near or far method. That's one way of looking at it. Now the first thing that jumped at me was that if you go with the idea that above him could be the way he's thinking then the clouds is a perfect card to have in this position because it would suggest that there is a lot of confusion or doubt or uncertainty because those are things that I attribute to the clouds that's on his mind or that is his thinking. You know, and then if you look at the picture, we have the dark side of the clouds and then the um, light side of the clouds. And so that could be, you know, looking at the dark side of a situation and looking at it on the brighter side. So, and you know, it could be like his mind going back and forth and back and forth, back and forth with that. So it's not like he stays entirely pessimistic or entirely optimistic, but that he kind of goes back and forth. <laughs> so, um, but it's, it's a very um, appropriate card to have in this position if you go with the idea of it being on his mind and not necessarily with the near and far method. Now, 
I started this series because a lot of people who saw my uh, first Grand Tableau video wanted me to go more in depth with the houses. So the clouds is in the house of the bear. So the bear for me represents things like power and strength and resources. So if we look at the clouds as confusion and uncertainty and doubt, then it could be suggesting too that Howard also has on his mind, he's doubting his strength, he's doubting his power, and he's unsure of how resourceful he could be to turn the situation around. So those are other elements keeping with the idea that the clouds is in the house of the bear. So the longer that he stays in this kind of pessimistic thinking, it could be also playing out in his doubt and being unsure of his ability of becoming a strong ARC. So I'm seeing that. Now, the card above the clouds is the moon. And so the moon is a card that represents career. And again, a very appropriate card. And it also can represent recognition. So again, very appropriate. Now, the moon is in the house of the snake. And so the snake for me can represent complications, something being a long and winding process. So we could read that moon card in the space that it's in as career complications. So again, it being on his mind because it's above him, you know, seeing this as career complications. And then if we read the combination of clouds and moon, it would be, you know, uh, being unsure about the career, you know, career uncertainty, you know, doubts about the career. So all of that plays into, a, into a, the situation that we were discussing. So, you know, it could also be in the house of the snake that the whole idea of being recognized is becoming uh, a complicated process, you know. So it would be like it's acknowledging the fact that, yes, he is having a challenging time getting recognized and getting recognized not in the sense of fame per se, but in the sense of getting seen. That's how I look at recognition is like getting to be seen. And also looking at the image on the card is very interesting that we have a shepherd. And now this is not a Lenormand technique, but I'm looking at the image. We have a shepherd with a flock of sheep. And so it could just be about him finding the resources or the energy of gathering a flock, which would be like-minded people who are interested in what it is that he is trying to put out there. So I'm seeing that whole imagery. And again, in the House of the Snake, it would just say that is part of the complication. So now the other thing about the snake, and um, this would be more of the emotional side of the snake for me. It could also represent jealousy and, and being envious. And so it could be like he would be jealous and envious of maybe somebody else's career or somebody else's reputation, somebody else's recognition. You know, somebody else who may be an ARC, who may be at a different level than he is because this card is up. So it could be somebody who's in a position above him. And in that light, then the snake could also be read as a woman. And tradition holds that it could be a woman with dark hair and glasses. But if that is not the case, one thing for sure is that she is clever. So I'm seeing that. So it could be a woman in particular who he is jealous and envious of her career and maybe her reputation. And going with the, the idea that the moon can sometimes represent, I'm going with the imagery here with this, you know, the moon is something that's um, nighttime or in the dark could represent something that he might not be fully aware of. And this is a nice way to segue to the card at the bottom below him because that is actually the woman card. So again, it would just reinforce the idea of like Howard and this woman being in two different levels. And so maybe on some level, you know, he may be jealous and envious of this woman and he may actually think um, that he may be like, you know, above her in some way, you know, because of the, the way the cards are positioned. Like he may see himself as being above her in some shape, form or regard. Now the woman here, whereas this represents what's on his mind, these two cards, this card here would represent unconscious motivation because it's below him. So again, it would just reinforce. I love how these cards are reinforcing the same thing. He may have some unconscious um, feelings uh, or emotions that are directly attributed to this woman. And so now the thing that struck me are the cards that are surrounding her. If we look at those for a moment, 
First, let's look at the fact that the woman is in the house of the sun. And so the sun is a card, or in this case, a position, the house of success and confidence. So it would be direct opposite of Howard having doubts. This person, this woman, is successful and she's very confident in her skill and ability. And it makes sense because the anchor is the card that's next to her. And the anchor for me is a work-related card. So it could represent, you know, a long-term career. She's had a career, a long-term work in this, um, in this industry or in this field. And so much so that she has created a sense of stability and security with that because I also see um, the anchor as stability and security. Um, it's also a card of livelihood. So this woman has had a, a, a long career. She's made her livelihood being an Akashic Records consultant. Now, the anchor is also in the house of the lilies. And so the lilies in this regard could represent experience. So again, she has more experience. She's seasoned. You know, she has reached a level of maturity in her work. And so again, that would be total opposite of Howard because he is just starting out. So I'm seeing that as energy. And then the anchor describing the woman, it could also describe her as being hardworking, and serious because those are attributes I also look at the anchor and especially when it's connected to a significator card so this is also then the gentleman in this case is Howard but this is also the other significator card in the deck and so it's, I'm seeing this as describing her now if we look one step over you know we have the whip here so this might explain the unconscious motivation here because the whip is in the house of the lady so it could be like Howard has some unconscious anger because that's one of the meanings of the whip is being angry um, or being heated. Like, you know, like the woman makes him hot. You know, every time he gets in the same space with her for whatever reason, um, he gets hot or, you know, he gets angry with her. And it could be, too, that on some level, this woman may be a trainer because the whip can represent, you know, a uh, training and discipline. So not only is she hardworking and serious, but she's also very disciplined. And it could be part of the energy here is that she is trying to whip Howard into shape and he may not just like her training style. So that could be it too. So it could be two things. Number one, he may be jealous and envious of her success, her reputation, but also too, he may be unconsciously angry with her at the way she goes about working with him if she is training him. Now, she may not be aware that this issue is going on because the dog here on the other side can represent somebody who considers themselves to be or is seen as, and I say as seen as because it's in the house of the moon, and remember now the moon is recognition or reputation, so it could be she sees herself or she's seen as being helpful, um, friendly, and supportive. Uh, but that may not be his experience of her. The other thing, too, it just informs us that the moon being a card of, uh, or in this case, the house of career, that the dog in this regard can be having a career as a consultant because I tend to see the dog as somebody who's an advisor or somebody who's a consultant in terms of, of careers. It would be somebody who's in a position to offer help and support, but typically in a way of giving advice. And so that's what an ARC does. It's, uh, it's the person is actually giving um, help and support and advice, but it comes through the energy of the, uh, the records. So I'm seeing that as the possibility there with that. So, um, yeah, so a lot of unconscious energy there, but it also informs us as to the nature of the relationship between Howard and this woman, possibly. So, the next thing we could do is we could look at the cards that are behind him. So now, if you notice, there are quite a few cards behind him. So, this, if I didn't say it before, this column here represents his present. This column here represents his future. So, all of this material here on this side from here over represents his past. So as you can see, there are a lot of cards in the past. So the way I typically look at the past, you could look at the past as the cards that are closest to 
the significator would be the immediate past. And each card that goes further out represents the distant past. So when I looked at this, I started with the distant past and worked my way over looking at the cards from left to right. So the first card in the line is the tower. So I tend to look at the tower as a business card. Um, it typically can represent a large-scale company, a corporation, but it can also represent freelance work and some people attribute it to as self-employment because there isn't, uh, in the illustration, there is a single person in the tower. So it could represent um, self-employment. I tend to look at the tower as something that um, is bigger, is large scale, so it would be you know freelance work, but also with the idea of wanting to um, expand that. So I tend to see the tower as an expansion card when it comes to self-employment. So now the card next to it is very interesting because it's total opposite. Here we have the house. So the house, when we're looking at business and career, for me can represent a small business or it could represent a home business. So it's very interesting that we have the dichotomy here. Now the interesting thing about the pair in terms of Howard, it could represent like a sense of isolation. So I was looking at this because sometimes a tower can represent isolation or separation. So could, these two cards could be suggesting too that part of the challenge for Howard has been in the distant past anyway, that he was keeping himself at home. You know, he was not getting himself out of the house in order to grow his business. So that could have been a challenge there. The next card in the line is the tree. So now here is a positive card because the tree can represent growth and development. So here we get to the point now where, you know, Howard sees that he wants to grow and develop his business. So now the tree can represent growth and development, but something that takes place or happens over time. So this card would be suggesting that he would need more uh, patience with the process. It's not going to happen overnight, and so he needs to understand that. And it's very interesting that the tree is in the house of the tower, which is the card over here, and that just, again, reinforces the idea of the growth and wanting to um, expand or enlarge his freelance work. But it's going to take time, and he needs to be patient with that. The other thing about the tree in this regard, I tend to look at it as um, branching out. So, you know, it's a nice thing to say that growth happens when you're willing to branch out. So that's another thing about that. And then the last thing, I see, I see this card as like developing connections. So one of the things that uh, Howard would be mindful of, or at least he was possibly, is about developing a connection with the masters or the record keepers. And again, going with the energy of the tree, again, developing the connection is something that's going to take time. It takes time to develop that kind of energetic connection with spirit guides, with angels, with the masters, whatever kind of um, spiritual energy you're working with, the connection takes time to grow. And so it's saying too that the roots are there because I'm looking at the roots of the tree, so the roots are there, but it's just a matter of developing that and letting that um, take shape. And so he has to be patient with that. So now the card next to the tree is the ways. And so now the ways can represent um, a decision, a choice, you know, options and alternatives, it would suggest at some level being behind him that Howard at some point made a choice of some kind and it would be involving like what direction is he going to take this in. He may have been faced with being at a crossroads and seeing a couple of options and needing to choose which way he was going to go with this because they tend to look at the ways as um, direction. And it could be like movement because she's crossing the bridge. So that could be, you know, bridging the gap. It could be like, you know, getting from point A to point B, you know, that kind of energy. But at some point, you know, nothing can happen until he makes a decision and decides what direction he wants to go in. So I'm seeing that. And now it's very interesting that it's next to the stars because one of the choices he could make or, you know, the jumping off point or the result as having made a choice is what is the goal. I tend to look at stars as, you know, ideals and goals. And especially in my work as a life coach, as in some other energy of the stars, you know, is, is life coaching would be, you know, well, what's the goal here? Where do you see yourself going? Where would you like this to go? So that would be something that he would have to consider and make a decision 
based on that. So it could suggest too that in the future, after making the choice of the decision, he gets some clarity, he gets some guidance, he gets some direction. Those are all the things that I attribute with the, the stars in terms of what direction he wants to go in or what approach he wants to take. So I'm seeing that as a possibility. Now it's very interesting because the stars is in the house of the mountain. So it could be like, you know, a challenge with being inspired because in this regard, the stars could be inspiration. So a challenge with being inspired or there's a, a setback or a delay with the goal. Um, you know, you hit a roadblock <laughs> going with this, you hit a roadblock or a speed bump and it kind of takes away from your sense of inspiration. Um, so seeing that as possible energy with that too. The other thing about the stars could be um, in terms of the tree on the one side here about branching out is about there's a couple of choices or options for him to branch out. This card, the stars in that regard could be like um, finding a network of other people who are doing a similar thing because both the ways and the stars can represent multiples of something. So. It could be him finding a network of other people who are doing a same thing that he could be inspired by, be motivated by, or, you know, learn from, you know, going like, you know, getting with, in touch with these people and saying, how did you do this when, you know, if they were faced with a similar kind of choice or decision, how did they, what did they do and how did they move forward? And he could learn from that. He could benefit from that. So the other thing about this card is that the network he could find online, and I'm sure that the ARC has an online network that he could be in touch with, he could develop connections with, you know, kind of get himself out of this space of isolation and kind of connect with other people who are doing a similar thing. And But he also has to be mindful of not letting his, if he is this, this jealousy or this envious be the thing that blocks him you know, keeps him from moving forward. How can he move past that? Because that may be the hindrance here uh, the, with this, you know. So again, not just the woman, but other people who are doing a similar thing. If he's judging himself and making himself feel less than because he is not at the same level as these people, well, he's not going to um, take their advice under consideration because he um, has some negative conditioning that he has to work through to work through that. So I'm seeing all of that with the stars. And then the last thing, because um, things keep jumping out at me, the house and the stars can represent having a website. So, you know, I tend to look at this pair as like a homepage on a website. So it could be suggesting that one of the things as a goal that he would need to accomplish would be having a website. So this way he has a way to direct people to a place to find him and that would also allow him to branch out and expand because now he's not necessarily maybe just dealing with people locally going with the energy of the house but has now branched out to looking for people online or having people online find him too so that could be a, something else he might want to consider is how can he be found online what resources could he use online that would help him get found by other people and expand his possibilities there so I'm seeing that now the card closest to him is the ring and so now the ring can represent a commitment and it would suggest too that you know in the house of the ways because that's the space the card is occupying that he made the choice because it's behind him so he's already done this he's made the choice to move forward with this he's he's kind of maybe um, got himself either recommitted or re-engaged with the idea of being an ARC, which would make sense or else we would, again, we wouldn't have had the conversation. So at some level, he made the choice to commit to this and to see it through. So I'm seeing that. And it could also be too, that once he made the decision, you know, about the direction he wanted to go in, once he became clear on his goal, that allowed him to uh, commit. You know, and the other thing about that, if he was working with a coach, let's say, one of the things a coach would do would get him to, um, make a commitment, you know, um, and, and then again, you know, the coach would ask him, what would you be willing to choose to commit to? And then that would be creating a plan to move forward, you know, and it could be like part of the confusion here, maybe that he's not clear on his goal about what he wants in terms of the business. So I'm seeing that kind of energy with the ring. 
And so now the next thing we could do is look at the card that's in the position of what's in front of him. So now if you notice, there's only one card here in the future. So typically, most people when they're wanting to look at their grand tableau, they want more cards in the future. So I could have chosen to collect the cards, um, reshuffle them and relay them out. But because of all the information in my initial impression, I decided to stick with it and and look at it the way it was and keep it the way it was because it, a lot of the information was validating his experience. So I'm like, why change that? So here we have this card. So this card would be what could be coming up in the near future for Howard because it's closest to him. So here the lilies represents, like I said before, when we were talking about the woman down here at the bottom, this card represents experience. So it could be suggesting that in his future, he is going to become more experienced. He's going to become um, or gain more experience as a result of the commitment he made. He makes a commitment, he honors a commitment, and as a result of honoring that commitment, he becomes more experienced and he gains more experience. The other thing about the lilies for me, it can represent, since he's looking at it, it would be Howard seeking a way to find peace about the situation because if you remember in my overall impressions, his card is in the house of the mice, which is the stress and the worry. So now he's seeking like, okay, I don't want to be in this energy. I don't want to be stressed out and worried about this all the time. I want to have some peace about it. So he would be actively looking to become more peaceful about it. And that's nice to see um, with this card being right in front of him. So the other aspects of the lilies are this, is that he could seek out or find in the near future a mentor because the lilies can represent an elder, um, a senior, somebody who's got more experience than he does, as well as becoming more experienced, he could also seek somebody with more experience who could help him with that. So I'm seeing that and the lilies, if you go with the playing card insert, the lilies is the king of spades and so that could suggest an older man, you know, possibly mentoring him, um, um, giving him the benefit of the wisdom he has gained through his experience, much like this woman. But it would be different energy because being on the same line, he may get on better with this person coming in than he has with this person below him. So I'm seeing that kind of energy with that. Now, the other thing about the lilies in terms of it being in the position of the future, this is a timing card. So the lilies for me can represent the winter months and in particular, a time period around Easter because I go with the idea of, you know, Easter lilies. That's how I see it. So I'm playing off of that. So it could be we're in the winter months now. So it would be interesting to see what kind of experience he gains or he develops between now and then. So, um, and I will end on this note, the lilies is in the house of the heart. So the heart is for me, a card that represents passion and it represents enthusiasm. So it could suggest that the more experience he gets and the more calm he becomes as a result of that, he also becomes more passionate about his work as an ARC. Um, he becomes more enthusiastic about it, which is a nice end note. So. Again, these have been the cards surrounding the significator. We looked at the cards above him, below him, behind him, and in front of him. And so in our next installment of the series, we're going to be looking at the cards that form the diagonals. So uh, we have the diagonal here. We have um, diagonal here. We have a diagonal here. And we have a diagonal here. So that will be the focus of the next installment of this series. Um, I want to thank you for joining me, looking at the cards surrounding Howard. I hope that you found this video helpful and um, informative in your own working with the Grand Tableau. And until our next video, I want to say bye for now and take care.